Yo, what is up everybody? I am Mami Yoshiko. Welcome to my channel if you're new here or welcome back to my channel, Mother Freaker. If you can't tell, I'm freaking sick. Okay, you, you guys already freaking know. I'm always sick. So a lot of you guys wanted me to continue this Fruits Basket episode, video, review, comparison thingamahig or whatever. So for this first time around, I'm going to do episode 2 through 5. Episode 2. And during the second episodes after the craziness of the first one, after Toru slips on Kyo and finds out they're all freaking animals. If you see the comparison, you see that there is a very big difference between angles. I also notice you see more of the classroom instead of its usual just a singular wall. There is more dimension, that their world is more multi-dimensional than it was in the 2001 anime. Can we just talk about how much cuter and adorable the boys are? Yuki and Kyo, so much more adorable. And Kyo's blushes destroy my soul, my existence, my being. Me, as well as a lot of you guys watching, have noticed that the comedy is very diluted, that the series is not as comical as it was in the 2001 anime. However, in my opinion, a lot of the comedy is still there, but the manga, as a lot of people express, the manga is a lot more serious and a lot more dark than it was portrayed portrayed in the 2001 anime. The freaking hat, the lovely, beautiful hat. I'm literally gonna break down because of that hat. I also love with Akito's voice. They don't even try to hide it. I'm not gonna say spoilers cause I know not everyone knows, but if you already know, you know what I'm talking about. It's like they're not even trying to hide it. I also noticed several things that were removed and changed from the 2001 reboot, as well as the anime. The scene where Toru goes and sees the horrendous destruction, garbage dumpster that their kitchen is. The scene where Toru is cleaning up their kitchen is completely demolished, and I read a lot of comments stating that you guys think a lot of the removing of certain clips kind of interrupts the process of Toru's character being built as we know. As those who know Toru from the manga, and the 2001 anime, she is very selfless, work hardy, always tries so hard to please everyone and make everyone around her happy. However, you notice in the 2001 anime, certain parts are skipped over. Other than that, I think the outfits Toru wears is freaking adorable. I also notice for all of them, all of the characters' clothes are more modern. Like Toru has a more cutesy-like attire, as in Japan, as they do. They freaking have cute clothes everywhere. Yuki's clothes keep the very ethnic exotic style with a purple and gray color scheme and Kyo freaking the interpretation of Adidas on a bunch of his clothes is the is going to be the freaking death of me because I love it with Shiguri I just noticed he has a bigger wardrobe of kimonos he just has a lot more colors than before you also notice in the reboot that you definitely see the more sinister side of Shigure. I have read through several forums and a lot of people who are discovering Fruits Basket through the reboot, they are discovering the manga and the old anime and a lot of them are noticing that Shigure, for those of my manga readers who already know, a lot of them are now discovering this more sinister dark side that Shigure has. And a lot of people are wondering, is this going to lead up to it? Is this something we are going to see brought into action in the animation? The scene with the school, I love how freaking Saki is just curling Toru's hair. I was like, why is she just curling her hair? And that scene, that freaking scene when Kyo jumps out of the building and twirls around, that's a freaking cat. Okay, that was the scene I was talking about in my last video. I'm like, dude, that's a fucking cat. I love with the reboot that they made the movements of the character so much more animalistic. Like, you see the freaking animal in these characters more in this reboot. In the OG anime, after, after Kyo jumps out of the building in episode 2, it ends in the OG. And in the manga, it also ends and insinuates to the next chapter. However, in the reboot, they proceeded on to where episode 3 of the reboot began. Which I thought was interesting and wasn't sure why they did that. But I wasn't mad about it. Nope, I remember when I was in the theater, I'm like, are we on episode 3? But no, it was episode 2 still. I noticed a lot of people as well were discussing their feelings and opinions of the different lines and dialect 
In the OG original 2001 anime, there were so many iconic, hilarious lines that just made this anime 50 times better, especially with the English dub. However, I noticed a lot of people were really unhappy. It kind of just made the scene seem really weird, but I don't know, a part of me feels that's because we are familiar with a certain line, so of course it kind of sounds weird to us when we hear the same voice saying something else. Like, of course to us it's just weird. As I mentioned before, I believe in like my first anime dub audition video. There are a lot of reasons why when dubbing anime, the translations are always off or the lines are always weird. Because when you are dubbing anime, you are working with animation that is already there and that you cannot edit. In Japan, you do it like a normal cartoon, how you have lines and the animation is made to fit your lines. But when you're doing English dub, the animation's already there, it's already done. So the AV directors and the voice actors have to try their very best with the translations they have to try to come up with lines that fit between the flaps. And if the original line doesn't fit, they have to change it. And that's why in voice acting and animation dubbing in general, it's important for them to have an improvision background. To be able to improvise and help make lines on the spot that fit between those mouth flaps so they can continue on. It, it's a lot more than they just change, it's a lot more than that, and a lot of people don't know that. So I'm not surprised that a lot of lines were changed because if it doesn't fit the flaps and if it doesn't fit within the animation that they, are, that they were given, they can't do anything about that. I also love how a lot of the emotional scenes are still there. I loved the scene where Chigure was talking to Kyo about hurting Toru's feelings. It, it, I love that they still kept that original atmosphere that that scene had. I also love, and this is why I love Fruits Basket in general, that a lot of the problems and insecurities these people have are real things that real people deal with. And it's not just some cliche emotional problem that they're trying to get past. But in Fruits Basket, it's they're always so very relatable. Kyo worrying, wondering about if he will ever meet someone who truly wants to be his friend. That is relatable real shit right there. And can we just talk about how freaking adorable Kyo is in this Fruits Basket? If I was not Team Kyo before, I'm Team Kyo now. He's just so adorable and such a relatable character and I love him. The scene in the freaking forest is still hilarious as ever kills me every time. You also notice that the faces and the art, they aren't as dramatically comedic as they were before. But the scene still hits me in the feel strain, just the same, you know what I mean? I freaking ship Toru Kyo ship sail. I freaking was on that Toru X Kyo ship so freaking bad in episode 2. I do miss Shigure's stalker song. I, I miss, that's like one thing I miss. I miss Shigure's freaking, like, where's his high school girl song? Where is it? Cause I didn't hear it and I needed to. The animation's already there. If the Japanese didn't do it, the English dub's not gonna do it. I also adored the scene Yuki picked up Toru from work. Like I said before, I love that in Fruits Basket, there are like relatable problems that people feel. Like Yuki being insecure about, is he being too nice? Is he only being nice so people would like him? Cause when he was younger, he was that kid who would give candy to kids at school just so they would play with him. And like, that was me. <laughs> That was literally me in elementary school. Like, no shit, like, I'm being so, I'm being real right now. When I was in ele elementary school, I would literally give kids money. I would literally give kids my toys at school. I would take my toys to school, and I would give it to kids because I wanted someone to play with me because fucking lonely weeb. Hi. The scene with Yuki taking Toru to his beautiful garden always freaking breaks my freaking heart. I will always, I will always cherish Kyoko Honda. Best anime mom. What? But damn, they make her so beautiful. She was already beautiful before. But she's only as twice as beautiful now with this freaking updated animation. And I actually love her new English voice actress. She captures Kyoko so well, and she has that motherly instinct. However, you kind of still hear that rebel in it that Kyoko is. And it just makes me freaking cry for her all over again. Yuki's smile also always crushes my soul. 
Why do they do this to us? I don't know. Episode 3 almost exactly follows suit with the OG. I also noticed that they put multiple scenes from episode 7 from the original anime in this episode for some reason. For example, the rice ball making scene, that wasn't supposed to show up until episode 7, which is more accurate to the manga, I believe. Uh, they also threw Momiji in there, speaking German. <laughs> And I was like, um, excuse you? And that was one of the things the original anime overlooked, was Momiji's German roots. And in the manga, he did speak German. But in the OG, you kind of... Like, you knew he was like a halfer or something, because he's blonde, but you never really got the gist. I never even knew he was German until I read the manga. So I didn't hate that that scene was there, but I also noticed that that scene wasn't in the manga at all. So I was kind of wondering what was their point of that. I didn't hate it, but I was kind of wondering what was the purpose of throwing that in there. I don't know if they just wanted to make a point and shove it in your face like, bitch, he's speaking German now. I wasn't sure if that was what they were trying to do. I feel like it, maybe. Episode four, I love Kagura. Kagura was one of my favorite characters in the beginning. You will know why I'm not, I still love her, but <laughs> I have such a love-hate relationship now. I love her new character design. I, she's still as cute as ever. The parts where Kagura beats the shit out of Kyo is still as funny as ever has me dying every single time. The new English dub voice is a little more higher pitched, a little more squeaky and pitchy, but I don't hate it because the thing with Kagura is she's supposed to seem younger when she's actually older than Toru Iki and Kyo. But in the OG, her voice was a lot more deeper and mature, so it kind of gave it away. The scene where Kagura talked about Kyo's true form had me like lose all of my shit. Cause in the OG, they didn't even address that. Cause, cause Kyo covered her freaking mouth before she even, before that even slipped out. But in the reboot, they let Toru hear that true form part. Even freaking recap to her going, his true form? Like I just, that scene was so dramatic and I was like, fudge, sickle sticks. And you see Shigure's side eye and I was like, Man, this is gonna get bad real quick. And these scenes are both more accurate to the manga, as they show all of these characters acknowledging Kagura opening her freaking mouth. However, those big calamities, Kagura destroying the house with the washing machine and the fire, and in the reboot, her just destroying the house trying to cook and shit, none of these were really in the manga, but the scenes I believe were both really important. And it allows Kagura's character to weaken and make her more vulnerable to open up to Toru. Shigure talking to Kagura, they made the dialect more closer to the manga I noticed, of her talking about love, and in the OG he's like, yes I do, I don't know, this is where you freaking hit me, punch me, whatever. And when I was younger, I didn't even think twice about that, but in the reboot, you see that hurt in Shigure's eyes, you see that pain of him loving someone and it hurting so bad to freaking love someone. And this scene was more accurate to the manga as well, no spoilers here. But, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> there was one scene though that I was dying for. Like one scene freaking killed me in the English dub. There was a scene where Kagura was talking about being with someone in the Zodiac. If you're with someone from the Zodiac, you will be able to find love and happiness. Cause when you freaking hug, you won't transform into a freaking animal. And Kagura was like, right, Shig-chan, like Shig-chan. But he was like, yep, also sex. <laughs> And then Yuki freaking hit him going dirty. That part was in the manga. That part was not in the OG, but I'm so happy it was in the reboot. But I don't know, I don't know. Let me know if you guys agree. I feel the freaking original 2001 anime was a little more downgraded in a sense of darkness and all that. Like they kept a lot of the dark stuff very tame and they did not throw the sexual joke in there. So I don't know. The OG just seemed more innocent to me, but yeah, I get it. And a lot of you guys noticed I shared this clip when when Toru decided to go up and look for Kyo because he was being a freaking, I don't know, Kyo being a freaking hurtful cinnamon roll and talks with him on the roof. 
And when she does her right-handed jab, her right strike, she punches with her left arm. And personally, I didn't even notice until so many of you guys in the comments of my post were like, she shot with her left hand, yo. And I was wondering, huh, did they do that on purpose? Just to make Tori seem more like silly, ditzy, I don't know. So I checked the manga and no, she hit with her right arm. So I don't know if that was like an animation error or something. Who freaking knows? Say what you want about not hearing Kyo say you suck. That gleam in his eyes, freaking and saying horrible, freaking smirking at Toru. I was weak to my knees. Like that scene had me dead, dude. I, I love, I love Kyo so much. Freaking Kagura, she is freaking still hilarious as ever. I also loved how the voice actress was able to capture that same freaking chaoticness that the OG voice actress did. But that poor delivery boy, that poor delivery boy is probably rethinking all of his life choices. Kagura is so freaking cute as a boar. I love when they transform, they are so freaking cute. And can we just talk about how after Kagura left, and Yuki was talking to Toru, freaking Kyo, freaking cock blocked Yuki almost, <laughs> bunking her on the head, being like, yo, let's go. Stop talking to him, babe. Stop talking to him. My heart freaking jumped at the end of that episode when she was in the office on the phone and it was her grandpa. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I was not ready for this episode whatsoever. No! In the beginning of episode 5 was kind of hard to compare at first because the scenes were very very different and they added a lot of other scenes that weren't in the OG that made it hard to edit together. But the scene with her mother I thought was really cute, wasn't expecting it, it kind of felt a little rushed in my opinion. It kind of felt like things were going fast because episode 5 did not feel like 20 some odd minutes at all. It felt like 10 minutes. I noticed how they didn't really show when the boys were shocked about her leaving in the OG anime. And also in the OG anime, Toru stayed at her grandparents' house overnight. However, in the reboot, it wasn't that long after she left that they came running after her. The scene with the fruits basket gave my baby rice ball. <laughs> Freaking Toru always breaks my heart. Leading up to Toru leaving, it didn't seem that heart-wrenching at first, but that, I don't know, it was cause compared to the OG, you know, like there was more darker shading, the art in general was dark, the atmosphere, the vibe, but a lot of it didn't seem that way in the reboot. However, later, I was a mess, freaking mess all around, but now we're here at the grandpa's house, the cousins or whatever. She. She's so much more annoying. The cousin's so much more annoying. <laughs> Freaking holy shit. But oh, give me the strength to not wrench that dude. So if the whole time I was watching that scene with her freaking cousin or whoever that dude is, I still don't know. And I still don't care who that dude is. I was like, wipe that smirk off your face, you fucking piece of shit. I hate that guy so much. Stay away from Toru. And then I was freaking cheering for Grandpa Honda who freaking slapped that boy into submission. He fucking deserved it. He deserved it. I also took note that the grandpa referred to her as Kyoko a lot through the reboot instead of Toru, and ugh, that made every scene hit me in the feels like 50 times harder, cause you can see Toru, you can see Kyoko and Toru, and fuck, I was a crying baby during this scene. I wanted to hug Toru so bad. I was a mess, I was sharing so much on Instagram because I couldn't contain my feels, I was a mess. And I was in my chair going, don't grab baby, my boys are coming, they're gonna find you, they're gonna take you home, don't worry baby, they coming. I was, I was a mess, okay. Also, kudos to Laura Bailey, one of my favorite voice actresses. Her acting was amazing, the freaking scratching, crying, just, uh, I was, I was a mess, I couldn't handle my baby crying, no. But that boy, whatever the freak his name is, I didn't see it in the OG that the guy thought Yuki was a girl, but I was like, no, 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 don't you respect my baby, no. I was like, this dude. I love how in the OG he looked that he looked up at the man, cause you know, he's taller and he wanted to look him dead in the eyes and call him a lowlife, but in the reboot, Yuki made him get on his knees, not Prince Yuki, King Yuki. I. I was, I was, I was, oh my, I'm too much right now. I adored the scene with Toru and Kyo. 
Jerry Jewel will always make me a mess. Either voicing Victor from freaking Yuri on Ice, for those who don't know, yes. Jerry Jewel, voice of Kyo, also voices Victor from Yuri on Ice. When the young Toru was called out, as soon as I saw Kyo and Yuki's hands reaching to her, I was crying in the club so hard. There were several differences though, however, in this episode. In this episode, they take a step back and show more of Yuki and Kyo trying to find her and fighting, and I, I loved that part. It was so cute. Because when you watch the OG, I was like, where is Yuki and Kyo? I want to know what they're doing. I want to know. I want to see them. And you get that in the reboot. And when they were trying to find Tori's grandpa's house instead of just a little clip comparing it, I was laughing my ass off when Yuki and Kyo first found the house and Kyo was like, hey! And I was like, dude, I was laughing so hard. And Yuki was like, shut the f*** up, Kyo. It was hilarious. And you see their reaction to hearing Tori say how much she misses them and how much she just wants to stay and be with them and just wanted to go home. And them hearing that shit face talk smack to Tori. Kyo was ready to fight. Kyo was ready to throw hands, okay? And I was like, yes, baby, fight! But Yuki stopped him. Yuki stopped him. What killed me was after they got to the house and Shigure was like, you all captured the fair. Made and, and Shigure was just like, oh, Yuki was such a f***ing mess when you left. And he was blushing so red, being like, no, I wasn't. That was so cute. Why are they so much cuter in the reboot? Like, their blushes. And then him decking Kyo, just, I was dying. It, this, it gave me all the laughing I needed to not feel depressed about this episode because it made me so sad. This episode was beautiful. Despite the reboot being more diluted in terms of comedy, I see that the comedy is still there. I love the art. The acting is amazing as ever. And I'm, I'm just full on in love with this reboot. But feel free to critique in the comments. You know, I'm not, I'm not no anime YouTuber. You know, I don't really care. I don't really care about analyzing and getting into the nitty gritty shit. And I'm just happy that more stuff of what I love are coming out. That's all I care about. That's probably why I like live action anime movies because I don't give a shit. I'm just happy that there's more of stuff I like being made in the first place. Y you know, anyone, you know, I don't care if you do either. Do what you want with your bad self. But, um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Also, let me know if you want me to do shorter episodes instead, because I, I feel like doing episode 235, it took a long time to get this video out. I apologize. Also, sorry this video is late in general. Mother's Day, and I had a freaking exam for university that was recently, and I had to take care of that shit. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this little reboot recap video, and I will have another video out in the middle of this week, and I will have another video this weekend to make up for my bullshitness, okay? I also want to try doing this with other animes. There's a bunch of other animes that were rebooted. There's Hunter x Hunter, Voltron, Full Metal Alchemist. Let me know if you guys want me to make other anime remake reboot comparison videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for joining my weeb family. I love you very much and I will see you next time. Bye!